I need a mixing desk. Not one of the expensive ones, I need a cheap mixing desk. But cheap mixing desks still aren't that cheap, and to be honest, they're not very good because they're cheap. How cheap can I go with a mixing desk? All I need is two microphone inputs. I ended up with this. It's the main board from a Chinese karaoke system. Hi, welcome to another exciting episode of What's on Jenny's Bench. An audio mix is a really simple device. You just take an amplifier and you sum together a set of inputs into one input for that amplifier. And the output of the amplifier is a mixture of the inputs. Now, you can even make it without the amplifier. You can even just make it with a set of resistors and pots. But in most cases, you will have a set of little pre-amplifiers, then a set of variable resistors and a little amplifier. I made one like this when I was a student. It was very, very simple. It used, I seem to remember, a sort of BC-109 or similar transistor and three or four pots. Uh, I think all the parts were taken from old television sets. It really was a nasty piece of uh, equipment, but it did work, little mono mixer. Now, here I am 30 years later, and I need a cheap mixer. I looked for mixers online, and I found some rather nice expensive ones, some rather nasty, fairly cheap ones that were still actually more expensive than I wanted to pay. And so, hey, I will make a mixer, because I've done it in the past. And I priced up the parts, and I realised making your own mixer actually isn't as cheap as I thought it was because basically I'd need to buy some reasonably decent op amps and a bunch of reasonably decent pots and so I started thinking what else can I do and so I looked around AliExpress and I came up with this little module. This is the guts of a cheap karaoke machine. Uh, it's got a little microphone preamplifier chip, that's a lot op amp. It's got two microphone inputs, which come from these microphone sockets. It's got a reverb chip, which I don't need, and it's got an out output preamplifier. This whole board is ready to go, and it costs under $5, certainly under five pounds. Um, and I think, you have, I think I paid a quid or so postage and packing and uh, two weeks later here I had it on my on my bench uh, a little two channel mixer now it kind of does what I want it's uh, a two channel microphone mixer that's all I need it has a reverb chip I don't need but to be honest for the price it's got to be worth a try hasn't it so what I've done is I have put together a 3D printed case and I'm going to put it together and make myself a little mixer which let's see if it works shall we now I've assembled it in the box and as you see I've put the two microphone inputs on the back uh, there's a power input there which is a old-fashioned USB A mainly because I had the connector and USB is pretty uh, ubiquitous and there is the output jack. There's another pair of holes there because there is a line input. I think that's for the music in the karaoke machine. I'm not using it, but I'll put the holes in there in case I need it. Now, this actually came up with a very old school power supply circuit. There's a bridge rectifier. And there were, as a big pasta was under here. And there was a 12 volt linear regulator, which in turn fed another five volt linear regulator, which was here. Now, I'm feeding the whole thing with 5 volts, and so I took out the two linear regulators, fed the 5 volts directly to the board, and used a little um, boost converter to make 5 volts into 12 volts, power the rest of it. And this really isn't the nicest uh, solution from an audio perspective, because there's potentially all sorts of noise on USB, but when powered from a USB charger rather than from a computer, it's not actually noticeable. This is not a high quality device, so I'm not after a sort of extreme audiophile uh, performance here, but uh, it uses not a lot of current, so this little boost module seems to be uh, to work quite well. So when I first fired up my little mixer, I did so on the bench and uh, I noticed uh, immediately that uh, there was uh, a DC voltage offset on the output. So I wired up the oscilloscope first just to see what came through it when I 
gave it some signal. And uh, the culprit was there was a DC blocking capacitor on the output and uh, a little electrolytic, 47 microfarad electrolytic. And uh, I desoldered it and hooked it up to a, one of those little cheap uh, component testers. And it had a, um uh, equivalent series resistance in the ohms. Uh, I think it was, uh, had a, that was effectively a DC resistance, which allowed it to pass the, uh, pass the volts. There were several of the same batch capacitors on the board. Um, fortunately, a friend of mine had uh, some equivalent ones, uh, much higher quality. So uh, I desoldered all the uh, potentially faulty and certainly suspect ones and replaced them. Uh, now, of course, when you have a DC output with a big capacitor that's on a floating output, uh, there's always the danger that it can just the output can effectively follow the input. And while it doesn't carry a DC current, uh, it will float to whatever the voltage is. So to be absolutely certain I wasn't going to have a DC voltage on the output, I also put in a 47k ohm resistor um, across both of the outputs because they're, they're supposed to be 47k impedance. So uh, that just tugs them to ground just in case. Next thing to do with the little mixer was to uh, get some idea of its performance. And to do that, first of all, I hooked it up to my trusty HP distortion analyzer. I wanted a THD, Total Harmonic Distortion, figure. Um, and uh, with the HP's normal uh, setup routine to null out the uh, fundamental, uh, at one kilohertz, I measured it at between 0.25 and 0.27% uh, uh, distortion, which isn't a brilliant figure. An audio file device would be seen as poor quality if it had that kind of level of distortion. But actually, for something that costs under a fiver, it's not that bad. Uh, it's good enough for a little desk benchtop microphone mixer. You wouldn't use it in some high-end recording studio, but then again, no high-end recording studio would buy this piece of kit. So I know what its performance is. I know it's not stellar, but to be honest, I'm not disappointed. So having given the mixer a case and having characterized it, having measured its performance, there's one final performance thing to try, and that is to actually hear what it sounds like. So I've set it up on the bench here um, through a uh, rather nasty little USB sound card and with a also quite nasty plastic body dynamic microphone. It's actually one of the type of microphones that back in the 90s a uh, sound card was an important piece of kit like a Sound Blaster 16 and so you would receive with your Sound Blaster 16, you'd probably receive some speakers and a microphone. And this is a LabTech microphone. It looks great, but it really isn't high quality. So here we go. Um, I've got the uh, microphone one, and the input is about halfway up. I sort of set, set this up for levels with uh, Audacity. Uh, and there's probably a little bit of hum in the background, but uh, otherwise it's not too bad. Uh, let's just give it a little bit of reverb. Uh, I don't really want to use the reverb, but you can hear what it sounds like. Uh, I guess it works for a karaoke machine, but I'm not Elvis. Finally, um, on the right-hand side is this. Um, I thought it was a master level control, and of course I'm completely wrong, and I should have looked at the description in the uh, AliExpress, uh, AliExpress listing. Um, it's actually the level control for the line input. So this is actually a three channel mixer with two mics and one line input. The two mics are mono, but the line input is stereo. So I guess I might actually fit that other uh, set of sockets in the end anyway, because the three channel mixer is more useful than a two channel mixer. So in conclusion, this whole device cost me less than 10 quid to make. Okay, that's because some of the parts I had in stock, like the the knobs, and uh, it's a 3D printed case, and uh, uh, I think the uh, boost module was under a dollar. Um, but it's made a reasonable little mixer. You can see what it does, see what it sounds like, see what its uh, distortion is. But the fact is, I had to do quite a bit of work to make it 
uh, what it is. I had to replace the dodgy capacitors, and of course I had to give it a power supply. It was fun. I don't regret doing it. Uh, I suspect that unless you like playing with electronics like I do, just buy yourself a mixer, spend a bit more money. Um, to be honest, I will use this mixer, but at some point I'll probably go out and spend a modest three-figure sum for a base model mixer from a more decent manufacturer, and I'll end up with a proper mixer that actually sounds reasonable. So, there you go. Uh, if you want a very, very, very cheap mixer and you don't mind doing a bit of soldering, try one of these karaoke modules. Otherwise, buy a proper mixer, you cheapskate. I don't have a sponsor for my videos, but as before, I'd like to take this moment to talk about something else I'm involved with away from my career writing about tech. I am a board member of a small non-profit called TransRescue. We get trans people like me out of dodgy and dangerous places around the world. I'd like you to go to our website, read our blog and see what we're up to and if you can help us in our work. Thanks very much and thank you for watching this video.